Hello and welcome everyone here at BSF booth of KFAIR 2019. It's now 11 a.m. and this is our first tech talk of today. And I have Daniel Müller here with me who is in charge of the Competence Center for Film and Tape of the Plastic Additives business. And he'll be talking about Ergotech technology, which is a new way, a new approach to modify polypropylene. Daniel, stage is yours. Have fun. Thank you for the introduction. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my target today is to show you a little bit what you can do with uh, our alternative technology for a modification of polypropylene uh, called EGATEC. Um, what do we want to achieve with this product? We see that there is a trend in the market uh, that people want to have a higher flexibility uh, in the choice of polymers means in the end um, you usually get uh, in the market a polymer with a certain melt flow and you don't have so much alternatives around or maybe you're in a region uh, where you don't get everything that is in the market and with this technology you have a good choice uh, and use just a standard polymer and uh, you modify the polymer yourself in a way that it can be used in your application the right way. Uh, the second uh, topic is that um, you really have also the chance to go into new developments. You have a uh, high potential to develop new applications because you can really modify in a way that you can manage to get the properties in a special way according to your needs. Uh, the product as such is a, a product that is not based on peroxides. It's an alternative to peroxides and from this point of view it's easy to handle and safe to handle. I think it's a very important point. And what we clearly also can say is it's a, it's a product uh, where you can modify again in, in the right way. So you can use it for um, recycling application. For example, if you have uh, waste from the productions so or production scrap, it, you have a good chance to use the product in a good way again so they get a good and high quality product. What is behind the technology? Uh, in principle, it's very easy. We have a polymer. We can add the additive to the polymer. We go into the extruder, and then we modify the polymer by a radical reaction in the extruder and form the targeted viscosity. So we are forming a viscosity, forming the molecular weight and the molecular weight distribution in a good way. Uh, this can be done in a way that uh, we are just adding it under moderate condi conditions and then the polymer is containing the additive in a latent way so you can react it in a later step again usually something a resin producer would uh, think about or you can just di directly react with the right pro processing parameters so that you get the material the way you want to have it i just come with two three examples from the fibers industry here you see an example um, about uh, melt blown. Uh, melt blown, you usually have a melt index around 800 up to 2000 or more. So very highly uh, flowing material, low viscosity material. What you can see here on the left side, we took a melt flow 25, we ran it in an extruder, um, we did, did the reaction and we checked with three concentrations and what you can see is when using um, a lower concentration you achieve uh, for example a melt flow around 800 900 and the higher you go with the concentration you can increase the viscosity it's exactly the target we uh, want to have and what is happening now with this we are going to the right graph and in the right graphic you see uh, that the hydrostatic height is increasing so we are getting a better barrier properties uh, what in the end means increasing this property can be uh, good for having uh, more safety in the use of the product or the other option is uh, you can downgauge the material because uh, you have a good barrier so therefore you can use a little bit uh, less of grammage in the end product. I have then a second example. The second example is for PP spun bond application. So we are going more in the direction where we need to also have good mechanical properties. 
I have to explain a little bit the two graphics. So we have on the left side the tensile strength, we have on the right side the elongation. Usually what you see is they are controversially, so if the tensile is going up, usually elongation is going down. When you're doing thermobonding, this should not happen. You should have an increase in both, and this is exactly what's happening here. So we see here on the left graphic, and this is exactly going parallel with the, with, with, with the right graphic uh, from the performance. When using the, the CR technology, we achieve already at the lower thermobonding temperature, here in this case under 59 degrees C, we achieve already um, the mechanical property we want to have. We don't have to go to higher temperatures, so we are broadening the window. And on top of it, we are also increasing the mechanical properties um, of the products. Means in the end, what we achieve is we have a broader processing window, we have more safety in the production. We can go with lower temperatures, so means uh, we can maybe also save a little bit of energy. And because we have higher mechanical properties, we also have the chance to downgauge the material. This is my third example. This is a, is a case, uh, an actual case we have uh, running in the industry. The target of this project was to have uh, no waste, means uh, somehow we want to use 100% um, recycled uh, spun bond, melt bond, spun, spun bond material for the production then of the melt bond. And you see here on the right side the picture, you see here the very, very uh, thick uh, fi uh, filaments. Uh, this is the spun bond part, and in the middle you see the very fine ones, that's the, the, the melt bond part. So what we are doing is, in theory, we are taking something like this and we are producing the, the, the melt blown part of it. So you see the picture of this, uh, of this product we produced. For sure, when you have a target like this, you also need to have the right quality of the melt blown uh, to use it afterwards. It has to fulfill all the requirements. And what we can say is uh, we tested the product like this. The, uh, the, the, the trials were quite successful. We had a good spinability, really a good one. We had a good web formation. The final product performance uh, is given. And the product was also put into place uh, where it was needed, so into a in disposable article like a diaper. And uh, I think this is a good example for production of uh, material that is uh, regrind uh, used and it's uh, even increasing uh, quality, it's an increased quality product we can produce here. So I'm coming already to the conclusions. Um, what we wanted to have is we wanted to uh, bring uh, options to have um, better variety or better choice of polymer materials. We can run with different materials. Most of the time people are just using spun bond, but we are using not only, uh, we cannot use not only spun bond, we can use whatever material. We can run with this product, uh, metallocene or standard signal nata. We can run uh, standard uh, tape grades or spun bond grades, whatever. So we have a quite variety, uh, choice, variety of choice. And what we clearly have seen with the examples I was showing, we can improve the barrier properties, we can improve the mechanical properties, we have an improved processing window, and this helps us to really um, make a better performance or bring new options into the market, and we have seen this, uh, for example, on samples like uh, spawn bond, melt spawn bond. With this, I want to finish. Thanks for your attention. And if you have now some questions, you can ask now, or I will be afterwards at the booth, so you can also come to the booth and we can discuss about this. Thanks a lot.